Hey everybody, it's Adam, and welcome back to Tyranny, right? The last left off, we're about to delve into the next portion of the fortress. I did a little more inventory management, so on and so forth. I tried to reorganize my ability tabs because for some fucking reason I keep... My mouse keeps dragging them, I think. I haven't noticed it myself until I have obviously moved, but... Okay. So if anything crazy happens... Oh, there she is. Yep, the an archer there. Sage. Honor guard. Tarkus, Ari, and yeah, Ebb. Great. Okay. Hello. Peace binder. You are the face of the enemy vanguard? Kairos works in mysterious ways indeed. I hope you aren't here to hammer out into the truce. We're all of talk, but you still have a little fight left for you. Before you stand, Captain Tarkus Ari, de facto leader of the dwindling Vindrian Guard. Short, sunburned, and agitated even when standing still, her body is a compact sculpture of muscle and bone, and her face is short on symmetry thanks to the scars and dents in a of a, uh, dents of a dozen brushes of death. Their lives will certainly end here, here in Ascension Hall. She chortles, pointing up toward the ceiling at stone arches, somehow supporting the massive weight of the spire overhead. Consider yourself fortunate. Some of the finest rulers of Apex met death by duel in this hollowed hall. Truly, there's no final place to settle an, uh, an intractable feud. Sisters, brothers, Ari looks back to her cadre of soldiers with a solemn nod. It has been a privilege to lead and an honor to share in your final days. Taking a deep breath, she turns to wait pay, uh, to you, waiting silently. Let's see, what do you do again for your rebellion? Seems you're up, uh, uprising, nothing but dead kinsmen. Those words, branch up and menacingly. You've had so many chance to surrender. I have orders to make the screen slow. Bluff. I'm but here to. I'm but the first of your problems. The chorus and saber are right behind me, and the one thing they have in common is hatred of you. Hmm. Let's try for that. Fine. Just more gristle to chew upon. However many friends you brought, we'll be happy to slay them all. The captain nods at her own words, but looks to her soldiers and sees unsettled faces looking back. Steady yourselves. This is our moment of glory. Yeah, your moment of death. <sighs> your her rallying cry, uh, shout echoes to the chamber, but does little to bolster the shaking morale of her crew. Yes, uh, what did you hope to gain from your rebellion? Nothing that we haven't already gained. Our pride, our dignity. These things you can never take from us. She smiles, her eyes distant for a moment. Yeah, those things are all pretty inconsequential whenever you <laughs> face your more mortality, aren't they? Uh, the Vindrian Guard could never stand against all of Kairos' forces, but we can teach others to resist, and maybe you'll run out of soldiers before you run out of stubbornness, but I doubt it. You already use Kairos' currency, speak the language, military control is a formality. You would consign your whole realm to death because of your pride? And you would kill us for not bowing to your banner? I'll not let some servile bully lecture on the subject of pride. Sounds like you could uh, stand to learn something about humility. It's a good thing you won't surrender. If you were a conscript, I would uh, whip you to death. Yeah, seems your you're, you're uprising amounts to nothing but, but dead kinsmen, speaking. And what did taking Vindrian's well cost you? How many disfavored corpses rust in the valley? How many choirmen fell to our blades? And how goes the endless battle of the blade grave while you deal with us here? What was that again? Oh, stalwart, yeah. Arya laughs, wincing as she clutches at her side. And tell me, are the Otacons unified in victory? Did the armies bond in camaraderie over our deaths? Our stand here is the first of your problems. You treated your kinsmen for the slow inevitable, nothing, uh, the slow the inevitable, nothing more. How did you know the Archons were feuding? As tempted as I am to ask that, I have a feeling it won't net me any actual information. But... We are hopeless, not witless. Our eyes and ears tell us much. Ari covers her mouth, stifling a smile. I will die happy knowing your invasion will grind to a halt as the two Archons tear each other to pieces over the little, over the title of victor. Perhaps my only regret is not living to see which child king will win. If you're so eager to follow my blade, stop prattling and come at me, or you gutless as well. Any last words? Yes. A broad smile comes over Ari's face. Tell the voices of Nerat we are most thankful for his aid. We would not have made it this far without his support. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 
Right. That was a knee-jerk reaction. Perhaps she's just bluffing, trying to sow further dissent. Maybe. But at the same time... Mm. Okay. Right. On those three. You... Oh. Target her. There. Actually, that might have... Yeah, try and get both of them. Uh... As for me... I don't know. <laughs> Let's Come go. Me, Why am I attacking the wrong person? We can do this. I'll take care of it. Count on it. Okay. Shit. Actually. Yeah, you, you, you need. Consider it done. No, sorry. Really? Set her fire, would you? Consider it done. Actually. Okay. I got it. In fact, actually, she's the biggest threat currently standing. Uh. Or no, 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 no. I'll take care. Await my signal. You are. Go As you command. Come and face my command with all this. Blood comes. You Is that ink? No way. It's blood. <laughs> Is it that hard to tell the difference? Tell yourself. Oh.
That went poorly. <sighs> you worthless gnats. We may die, but others will follow our example. Mark my words. Really? Because all anyone outside this valley is going to know is that your rebellion failed. Crush them! Crush them all! The Fifth Eye's battle cry falls flat as he surveys the room, littered with Vindrian guard bodies. Now that's how it's done, Fatebinder. I should be angry you denied me a scalp or two, but I ought to thank you for saving us the trouble. What? What? This choice betrays your allies, turning them against you, will abandon your current faction-based quest, and instead forge an independent path of the tears. Oh god! I... You, uh, cool option? Not doing that right now. <laughs> I'm sure your arc will be pleased that I managed your job for you. I'm honored to have had a hand in the glory. Uh, fine. You bring glory to the core with your skilled arms and courage under duress. The fifth eye chuckles wickedly under his mask. I do so hope this is this is the start of a long alliance, good fate binder. The chorus could benefit from your strength. Rending edge. The clatter and madness of combat has finally ceased. Ascension Hall is, for a moment, tranquil. Favor with the Vengeance Guard, favor with the... Lost favor, I would say. May Pox take your children! Ari slumps to a crouch, her body trembling from injury and fatigue. With those words of victory, the burning hum you've heard in your head for days on end tapers off into nothing. Your mind returns to a state of quiet you have not felt since before you proclaimed the edict upon Vengeance well. I lay, uh, I lay claim to Ascension Hall. Let us be free of this edict. You feel a tug in your chest as a warm of uh, as a warm energy begins to form around you. Before you know it, you feel as as if you were lighter than air. I can fly. Holy shit! Uh Okay. The mountain spire. Ooh. You blink away the last of the luminescent trails in your field of vision. The masonry of Ascension Hall is replaced with a wide open, sp with wide open space in every direction, save for the slab of ancient stone beneath your feet. High, uh, high winds shove you, pushing you off balance. The air is cool and thin, unsatisfying to your lungs. Is this? Lantry looks out to the horizon, wide out of excitement. Yes, this must be the mountain spire. When was the last time? Lantry's eyes look down over the edge. Dumbstruck by the vertical plunge, Lantry backs away from the edge. I may need to retch. Yes, uh, this is certainly a change. The wind ruffles the feathers in her hair, and Verse quickly smooths them down. A damn cold change. She peers over the edge. Think I could land on my feet if I jumped? Not that it would matter for long. <laughs> the important questions. Kairos, be merciful. What now? Beric spins around on his feet, looking about, trying to take in as much as he can through the narrow visor of his helmet. Every way you look, mountains rise up along a distant horizon. The rivers and forests below bring to mind maps of Vindrian's well, and you quickly trace the Matani, the, Ir the Irinev, and all the numerous waterways of the region. Higher than you imagined it, this is indeed the pinnacle of the spire at Vindrian's well. How did we get all the way up here? Ari strains to stand up, clutching her side. More importantly, how do we get down? The fifth eye aims a sharp glare at Ari. The Vindrian guard must be rounded up and conscripted. The disfavored must be run down. Let's throw Ari off the cliff. <laughs> That'd be funny, actually. Hey, here's your leader. Take your back. Whee! The edict is gone, and we're still standing. If I were a conscript down there, I'd run for it and thank my good fortune. First draws herself up and takes a welcome breath. She glances down at the ground and with less with less certainty. Send word to the voices of Nerath that we are successful. I hereby claim this place. This is now an extension of Tunan's court and all combatants must leave. 
Mm. Never pleasure one day. I demand all blade sheath. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, state Tunan's name. Give it a little more light behind my decree here. This is no longer a strictly a military concern. We need to take a breath and sift through what just happened. You claim it. The Scarlet Chorus bleeds for your victory and you would so arrogantly, arrogantly savor the food all to yourself? Would you deny us the life sacrifice of countless... The fifth eye burst into a chortle, waving his hand dismissively. I jest. There are plenty more soldiers where they came from. The voices will not protest your claim for the time being. Send word to the voices of Narth that we are successful. Our glory overfloweth. We would happily carry such good tidings to the Archon, but this humble servant cannot fly. Besides, the Voices is a master of all things magical. I highly doubt whatever just happened escaped his attention. Agreed, I'll be witnessing what just happened as the edict is over, but you should report and return to the news. And hand her a note. The parts will say... Oh my god. I'm tempted to. Uh, no, my character's not that cruel. No telling how stable it is, but look close and you'll see images of Ascension Hall in the haze. Well, if you have a trained eye, that is. Of course, even if it's not stable, the alternative is jumping, so what do we have to lose? By Kairos' iron grip, how did the fifth eye tap his mask in the semblance of deep thought? The currents of magic glow as fire to our eyes. Strange how you saw this first. Send my compliments to the voice of Durant. Go to Kairos with the Crimson Spear. Uh, I'll just salute. It has been a pleasure in the loins to what? <laughs> really? It's a very poor way of saying, Well, this bloodshed has me very erect. It has been a pleasure in the loins to watch you fight, good fate binder. The voices will be most pleased. With the edict resolved, our purpose is clearly in focus. The disfavored must be slain. No doubt I'm the very definition of an enemy to the Overlord. I didn't just resist, I led others into resistance. So I know what's about to happen, but I know when I've met my match, and like most folk, I'll do whatever it, ta it takes to live. If you will show me mercy, I will pledge my life to you, good fate binder. The Tidecaster bows on one knee, lowering her gaze. I know I'm an Oathbreaker, so my word isn't what it used to be, but I promise if you spare me, I will serve you well. Why would I possibly trust you? I mean, she has shown that she can be trustworthy in the past, sort of, but let's ask anyway. <laughs> because I'm all out of reasons to fight you. The Vendrian Guard and the School of Tides are no more, leaving me with no loyalties or ties to, well, anyone. We must all bow to Kairos' minions eventually, right? I would die before serving fa uh, swearing fealty to the voices of Nirat. Engraven ash would kill me in a heartbeat. If I'm to serve anyone in this new order, it should, it should and must be the Archon of Justice. I and mean, you are the only servant in Tunan I can think to ask. Serve me well and all can be forgiven. If you will have my, my fealty, it is yours. I, Ebb of the Tidecasters, do hereby pledge my life and loyalty to Jura Matol. She dips into a formal bow. I will serve and obey so long as you have need or want of my skills. Ooh. Uh. Current party full. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Roster. Is... Well, he, hmm. I'm assuming he's going to leave my party. I mean, he did say until it was over. The edict was over. Uh. Be seeing you, Fate Binder. Sure. Oh, what? Hmm. Ah, uh, well, fine. We'll see. Vindrian's well has fallen. For the second time since the conquest began, Kairos' armies take the citadel from its defenders. With your help, the Vendrian God Rebellion has been crushed. Having taken Ascension Hall with your Scarlet Chorus allies, you satisfy the terms of the Edict. You and the forces of Kairos are free from the Overlord's death sentence. With the threat of execution no longer looming overhead, the Overlord's armies turn their attention away from the citadel and toward each other. 
The tensions that flared over the long siege reached an explosive crescendo as the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus armies clashed iron and bronze in a hasty, disorganized battle. After a brief exchange that left his soldiers bloodied, Graven Ash withdrew for his army from the valley, pulling the disfavored back to the secure fort in the Blade Grave. Once his army finished licking their wounds, the voices of Neron ordered the Scarlet Chorus to gather in the Stone Sea and prepare for war, this time against their former allies. The Archon of Secrets instructed his soldiers to respect your lawful claim over the Spire. Though a few greedy stragglers still lurk in the valley, the Scarlet Chorus were content to leave your stronghold uncontested. As days passed, the wounded and injured were nursed to health. You explored your strange bastion and planned your next steps with careful deliberation. As word spread the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavor turned on each other, factions once resolved to bend the knee are inspired instead to continue fighting. The Archon's feud has heralded the collapse of Kairos' offensive. Tunon, the Archon of Justice, observes the chaos and discord spreading across the land. The Archon summons his Fatebinder to return to court at the Bastard City and report on her actions in Vindrian's well. Oh boy. Our petty squabbles over a delayed siege have no doubt evolved into a respectable civil war. The voices of Nerat will want to discuss the matter. By now he's pulled back to the base at Cacophony. I suggest you don't keep him waiting. The last time someone left the voices of Nerat waiting, he pulled the skin off their hand and moved their bones into the shape of a glaring eye. And needless to say, it didn't heal well. I'll join your Cacophony as soon as I speak with Tunon. Remember, the senior Archon? Do that. The voices of Nerat loves to entertain new guests, and I'm sure he'll find you quite diverting. Be seeing you, Fatebinder. The dizzying energy from the spire falters. Whatever force awoke the power that resigns here gutters and fades, though a faint hum persists in the sculpture at the center. What? Stepping past the portal, almost to the edge of the spire, Fifth Eye lets out a squeal of panic. My exit vanished! It was just there! Uh... Call... Uh... Hmm. I don't know if I can fit. I don't know what happened. This, uh, look around. I'll just look around for a solution. That's, it's... The humming from the curious sculpture pulses and builds in volume as if to draw your attention. I'm actually curious as to how your... Oh, Your power's increased. You can't find the mountain spire. Uh... Hmm. Okay, then. At once. Oh, what? No. You. On closer inspection, a series of symbols carved around the base of the structure come into view. One symbol pulses with a blue-white glow. The pattern resembles the glowing lines of light seen on the floor of Ascension Hall moments before you found yourselves transported above the clouds. As you stare at the symbol, the chill of the wind abates and your chest swells with warmth. The air finally feels welcoming, your lungs sated at last. I'd be careful going any closer. This whole tower is humming with energies that we don't understand. Lantry holds his quill poised above a sheet of parchment with anticipation. Now, I didn't say back away. Let's find out what it does. Just be cautious. <laughs> you staked your claim on the tower and everything in it. Whatever that sculpture is, it belongs to you. I can feel power running through this place. Eb surveys the surroundings, her gaze sweeping to the object of the center. You can sense the magic of the spire even from down below, but up here, this close to the axis of the spire, the, the deluge of energy is numbing. Let's just touch it. The stone is smooth and cool to the touch. Marbling patterns move with the curves of the sculpture, looking more akin to veins than imperfections of rock. You can't find a single marking to suggest an artisan's tool. As you're about to draw your fingers away, you feel a sudden return pressure on your fingertips as the sculpture touches you back. Oh, that's not, you know, creepy at all. The sculpture's once again still. There is a rush of warmth through your body, a jolt of innervation that steadies your balance. A barrage of tactile sensation floods your mind as you feel footsteps and wind, not on your face or your limbs. A moment later, the flood of information begins to make sense. You are feeling the wind against the spire, and even the weight of your own feet as if the spire were a second spine. With this connection made, you feel your awareness pull from this place, not as a traveler, but as one, glimpsing, uh, but as one glimpsing the world from impossibly far away. In this moment, there is nothing you cannot see, though you uh, see it nearly all at once in a flood of sensation that is difficult to parse. 
you see a spire at the crossing of an ancient stone structure, two walls extending off into the distance. At the base of this eternal spire, settlers and merchants act in every way unconcerned, toiling under the observation of unforgiving taskmasters. As the shadow of the spire falls over them, the mood changes. The settlers pause in shared unease and look up at the sky toward you. Though you haven't seen it in person, you are certain this is a, vi a vision of Lethian's crossing. For nowhere else are the tearsmen brave or desperate enough to settle at the intersection of bane-ridden old walls. Near the settlement, uh, near this settlement built to the joining of the ancient walls, you see a breach in the massive masonry, a cleft into the forbidden, hidden realm within the old walls. Hmm. Shadows envelop you, muting all sound and vision with silent, with slight delay. There is a feeling of perversion, of wrongness. Whatever arcane power is allowing your senses to drift free of your body seems to falter in this place. Figures haunt the stone walls, drifting in emanations of cloud, claw, and fang. They pay you no heed, but you fear them all the same. In the depths of this forbidden place, the deepest chamber is bathed in light. An arcane symbol illuminates the floor, though, it, though the details hurt your eyes when you focus. With a gentle tug, your focus pulls back to a new horizon, though it takes you a moment to recognize it as venturing as well. You've, re uh, you've returned to the awareness of your immediate surroundings. The effect leaves you unsteady on your feet. The spire feels similar to the one you now occupy, though instead of radiating arcane life, it reeks of dust and crumbling stone, a branch withering once pulled from its tree. It reaches for you with a barely perceptible tug. The link between you and the spire recedes. The arcane bond is still present, but the mystical energies for the moment are quiet. Your body flutter with excitement and fatigue. It's unclear whether the mystic connection is strengthening you or siphoning. The tower offers nothing by way of answer, and you know that asking would only yield more silence and mystery. The deluge of sensation is over, but the positions of the other spires still linger in your mind. From your vantage point atop the mountain spire, you can easily spot the mysterious structures, each of them rising high above their distant surroundings. Huh. Did you see that? Uh, did you sense that? Lantry signs a long sigil in the air, squinting at you as he works his cantrip. The ripples are everywhere. When you move, the magic of this place stirs and churns. That portal over there, those burning braziers. <gasps> Shut up! They all grow more intense as you approach. I think it's responding to your presence. But before we get ahead of ourselves, it's worth remembering that you ended Kairos' edict. That's no small feat. Maybe your connection to this place is related? Either way, it sounds like something for the arcane minded to investigate. Speak with me after you see Tunon, Fatebinder. The disfavored need to be shown their place. If a dog acts up, you must use a firm hand to put it back down. If we are to succeed in the tears, we must work quickly. I will be waiting. Huh. Okay. Spires. Device perched on the Mount Spire Avengers Well is the product of a forgotten age. It is unclear what functions it once had or if it can be used again. Resting on any spire grants a bonus to all skills. Recru okay. What? Eat your storms. Near 430T on, the Overlord proclaimed an edict over the realm of Stalwart. Oh, that's, yeah. Those who, in pride and arrogance, stand against the peace and order of our empire shall be ground beneath the stones of their land. Let those who call themselves unbroken, who embrace the chaos of war and defiance of our order, be broken in the storms of our rage. Let our storm rage until the last blade be broken, or the line of regent falls. The Edict of Fire. In the year 430, Kairos, the overlord, proclaimed an edict over the Velem Citadel on the contested lands. It is our most solemn duty to, pro to protect the citizens of our empire from all dangers, including the danger of knowledge that is forbidden. Let those who in their burning arrogance hold tight to this lore be consumed by our wrath. Therefore, let the fires of Teratus rise up and consume them for as long as forbidden knowledge lies within the heart of the Velem Citadel. 
No edict. Here we go. In the last year of Kairos' conquest, when the Archon Cairn rebelled against the Overlord's rule, an edict was proclaimed upon the realm of Azure. To preserve our peace, the promise of safety to our citizens, all Archons must submit to our will. Any Archon who refuses proper submission must be brought to justice. Therefore, let the foundations of Azure be shattered and life drained from the land where the traitor can draws breath. And of course, no edict active here. Okay. Interesting. The voice of Kairos. Uh, Tunon is the voice for Kairos and the Tears, and he'll want to know the specifics of what transpired of Injurin's well. Turn to his court in the Bastard City. Okay. Whatever you did in Ascension Hall of Injurin's well has given you the power to interact with the Spire. Before you ascended the Spire, you had a vision when the edict broke. Understanding this vision might help you better grasp this new power you've acquired. And it's better because of the tears, and you feel the connection between them and this buyer you claim to have injured as well. Gather more information on these mysterious structures and seek them out wherever possible. Find a way to the Lithian's Crossing Spire. You've gained access to Haven. The region spire is attached to the old walls of Lithian's Crossing Settlement. Travel there and find a way to gain access to the spire. Right. Well, probably going to go with, Stur uh, with uh, Voice of Kairos first, I guess. Uh. What happens if I talk to you out of curiosity? Beric stares at you through his narrow eye slit, saying nothing at all. The only evidence that he still lives is the seam of heavy exhalations that escape the cracks of his helm. Are you okay in there, Beric? He continues to stare unmoving. Though you can't see his face, you get the impression that his mood has darkened even further. The stench that his armor exudes has intensified. <laughs> Poke him. Are you mad about something? I can guess. Did you die under there? A loud sigh escapes his helmet, the helmet, and Beric shakes his head in tired bewilderment. You betrayed Graven Ash, the go. Legion, and our northern countrymen. As far as I'm concerned, you are a traitor to this campaign. Beric leans in close, looking ready to throttle you. Hmm. Made a better case, accept it. It was my right as Tunan's fate binder to the side. True. Punch him in the gut. No. Stand down, soldier. Mmm. Something in your tone causes Barrett to reflectively straighten his posture and stand at attention. He gradually eases his stance and looks down at his palms, horrified by his automatic response. Let us be clear on one point. You have my blade, but my heart belongs to Ash and the North. I am a weapon bound to you only by duty. Nothing more. Fair enough. Okay, well, I'm going to end this episode here. This is... Yeah. I figured the game was going to go be... Well, after taking a look at the map and everything, I, I, I assumed the game was going to go well beyond Vendry as well. So, glad to see that I was proven right because I want more of this. And I'm curious exactly how far the game goes. And especially knowing the different options that are available, this is going to be definitely be a game worthy of me replaying at some point in the future. Probably just my own. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time when we go to talk to Tunon. That's the plan, anyway. See you then!